when I fly by myself, I like to see if I can fly, you know, practice what I preach. Can I, can I walk the walk? I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. I recently had to commute from Auburn Airport back to San Carlos, which I've been doing a lot of. Um, and I thought it was a cool opportunity to show you guys like what it's like for a CFI, or at least this CFI, to move from the right seat to the left seat, to actually be tasked with flying the airplane, um, and to see if I can kind of work toward living up to that objective perfect that I'm always trying to get my students to obtain. Um, that's a fun game for me to play so that I don't, you know, slack off. It's kind of like if a company is not growing, it's shrinking. Um, if a pilot is not trying to get better, they're usually getting worse. So come ride along with me in the Piper Aero 2 as I show you some of the highlights um, of the flight and just kind of give you a little ride to San Carlos and show you what it's like when I fly alone. All right, you guys, welcome aboard to Aero 1406 Tango. So I know there's a lot of talk about the Piper AD, and I'm just going to boil it down really quickly. If you're flying an aircraft, a Piper aircraft, that has less than 5,000 hours, you need not worry about this. But the good news is, even if it has more than 5,000 hours, um, the AD is really just about taking a look, taking a look at those bolts that you can't see in a normal annual inspection. And I really think there's nothing wrong with doing that. So, um, you know, if you, if the mechanic and the owner and operator has taken a close look uh, whether it's via the service bulletin that used to exist or the new airworthiness directive um, and they've determined that there is no cracking there is no corrosion and the aircraft is safe to fly you are good to go so let's ride along in the piper as i show you i really love flying this airplane i love the way it flies um, and it's just fun for me to move between makes and models so i guess that's one of the good parts about being a renter all right let's go ahead and get the weather Auburn Municipal Airport, automated weather observation, 1702 Zulu, wind 0, niner 0, at 5 knots, visibility more than 1 0, sky condition clear below 1 2000, temperature 1 0, Celsius, dew point minus 3 Celsius, altimeter 3 0, 0, niner inches of mercury, Auburn traffic, arrow 1406 Tango, taxiing Sunshine to runway 7 for right now and departure, Auburn. All right, you guys, we are taxiing here. I got you on board. Name of the game for me when I'm flying by myself is to try to fly as absolutely well as I can, right? I want to fly, I want to fly like I want my students to fly. I want to see if that's really possible. Auburn traffic, arrow uh, 1406 Tango. Departing runway seven, right down departure, Auburn. Approach arrow one four zero six tango. Arrow one four zero six tango, North Carolina. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, one four zero six tango VFR, approximately one zero miles to the north northeast of uh, McClellan. VFR San Carlos. Request flight following. Number zero six tango squawk four two zero three. Four two zero three uh, zero six tango. Six tango radar contact eight miles northeast of McClellan Airport. Attack mineral altimeter three zero one zero. 3010, uh, 06 All right, we've got flight following. Someone's watching our back. I picked up one of those Garmin inReach uh, personal locator beacons or satellite radios. I don't even know what that thing is, but I'm gonna send it back. You know, I always feel like it's important to have as many backup plans as possible. And um, I recently bought one of those Garmin inReach products. I didn't realize that it required a subscription, so I'm actually sending it back because I know that there are personal locator beacons that don't. 
require subscriptions. Um, so I'm going to get Howard's help and find find one that, that, that works for me that's a little bit less expensive but also gets the job done. Um, in the meantime, if you're flying with ForeFlight, look how easy it is to file a flight plan. You Okay, filing a flight plan is easy. Just here from the Maps page, you hit the Send To button, send it over to the Flights tab, and after you get your weather briefing and review it for accuracy, select Proceed to File, and boom, there you go. You've got a flight plan on file. You can even activate it or amend it right from this screen. All right, you guys, as we're approaching the Bay Area here, um I'm going to go ahead and start to use this system that I teach v uh, IFR pilots for arrivals because, you know, as much as possible, I'm going to try to keep everything consistent. The same things that we do VFR, we also do IFR, um, you know, the KISS simple. Keep it simple, stupid, right? If, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just do it the same way every time. So what I teach IFR pilots for managing the big picture is the five A's. That is the ATIS, first of all. Then the altimeter, which if we're on flight following or talking to a TRACON facility or a center, we're going to simply write down. Um, and then there's the approach briefing, avionics, make sure those are all good. And then finally airplane, which is like a gums check. We're going to do two gums checks before we land. So um, no reason we can't do that VFR, right? Yeah, I mean, it's 685 Sierra Tango, contact Fox and Tower, good day. It's sort of silly that we haven't. So um, I always use my number two radio, back to that KISS principle. I always use the number two just to listen. And, King Air, and I talk on the number one. So let's go ahead and get... Yeah, uh, Echo Sierra, contact approach 120.9 or 5. Let's go ahead and get the ATIS first for San Carlos. This is going to be our first day. Temperature 8, 2.2. Number four, clear direct Sacramento Executive Airport. The approach runway 300. All IFR contact ground control for clearance. One zero minutes prior to taxi. Nodems, runway 301 through Vasquez are out of service. Taxiway Mike is closed between golf hangers and Lima taxiways. Use caution for multiple cranes in the class Delta. Attention all aircraft hazardous weather information available on flight service frequencies. Advise you have Juliet. All right, we have information. Juliet, so that's ATIS altimeter, which we wrote down here, 3010. I'm not going to put it in yet because the person I'm talking to here, NorCal, is on 3011. Um, now, the approach briefing, I'm actually just thinking about that. Um, there's a couple ways we can go in, but I think I'm just going to keep it a little high and go straight in with NorCal. 125.35. Tango. NorCal, Aero 1406 Tango, 4500 VFR, San Carlos. Air 1406 Tango, Tango. Approach, advise starting your descent. There is traffic going to be below you. I'll point it out when you get a little closer. The open on Twitter is 3010. Okay, 3010 will advise descent 1406 Tango. All right, so ATIS altimeter approach briefing. Let's just continue to go direct. I'm not going to go around. We'll just go direct San Carlos from here. We'll manage altitude as necessary so that we stay above Hayward's airspace. Uh, but this is the kind of thing we want to start thinking ahead on a little bit. A few different ways that I could have gone into the Bay Area here. I'll show you the different ways, but I took the most direct route because uh, I did need to get to a lesson. When you're arriving into the Bay Area from the east or the northeast, there are essentially three ways you could get to San Carlos. Uh, one way would be to simply just come south here to the Sinol Gap and just come in underneath the Bravo, right? So you can maneuver your way over here toward Cal State University in between Cal State and Niles Canyon and then just get below 4,000, uh, get below 3,000, being careful not to hit this magenta shelf of Charlie unless you're below 1,500. But you see, you can get, you know, you're well clear of that on your way into San Carlos. And then you just simply call the Delta Tower and report maybe over Coyote Hills or over KGO. They will tell you to fly to the cement plant and enter a right base for 3-0 most of the time. Uh, that's one way. Another way is to come in directly over Oakland. You can see my route. I was coming a little bit more from this direction. So another option would have been to uh, contact NorCal and ask for an Oakland transition. They would hand me off to Oakland Tower. Oakland would bring me right over the top of the two sevens, then over the three zero numbers and ask me to fly directly to the mid span of the San Mateo Bridge from the three zero numbers like that. So you really come right over the top of Oakland Airport. You're at or below 1,400 as you transition toward the mid span of the San Mateo Bridge, keeping you underneath all of this messy airspace here. 
And then typically they'll just hand you off to San Carlos Tower. San Carlos will tell you to fly to KNBR and then make left traffic, correction, make right traffic for runway 30 most of the time. Um, but I wanted the most direct thing and my exact route was something like this uh, today. So I decided to just stay with NorCal. I was, I was talking to NorCal on 12535. Um, they will bring me down above Hayward's airspace here. Hayward tops out at 1500. So they had me coming down 2,500. I'm still below the Bravo here at 4,000. Then they brought me down to 2,000. And somewhere just past the toll plaza, um, they'll go ahead and hand me off to San Carlos. I will be careful not to descend into Hayward's airspace, but somewhere right here around where it says San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge, I get down to about 1,400 feet across the bay, get my hand off to San Carlos, and again, they'll tell me to fly to the cement plant most of the time and make a right base entry for runway 30. Arrival, so now avionics, let's get the tower frequency in the backup here. We know that San Carlos is 119.0. That's in my backup. My transponder is still set properly. Uh, the flight plan is in. There's a message here in the GPS. Let's listen to that, switch tanks. Not quite yet, mi amigo. All right, uh, but thanks for the reminder. Okay. So, avionics, I think we're good. You know, think of these A's, by the way, like, I always say it's like shaking a an apple tree. Or since I've been going to Palm Springs, an orange tree. Whatever. A fruit tree. Waiting for the loose fruit to fall off, right? What are you missing? What What did you not think about? What's gonna, what can you shake loose here just by giving it the old rattle? Um, that's it. Now the rest is airplane, but we're not going to do that until we're a little closer. We're in a retractable gear airplane today, so I would definitely want to make sure that I do two gums checks before we land. They say that there are those who have had a gear up landing and those that will. I defy that. That is not going to be me, knock on wood. All right, or you for watching this channel. San Carlos Tower, arrow 1406 Tango uh, with Kilo inbound landing. Arrow 1406 Tango, San Carlos Tower, enter right base, runway 30. Verify information, Kilo. Right base 30, we have Kilo, 1406 Tango. All right, so there's our handoff to tower. We have been uh, stage cooling the engine here, bringing the power back slowly. We went full rich on the mixture. We're going to go ahead and turn the fuel pump on. So that is, uh, there is no carb heat. We're going to start to slow the aircraft down and we'll get our gear down. We make all of these physical speeds call outs, right? So we're just stage cooling the engine. Bringing the power back. We've got it back to 21 inches now. That'll get us below 150, no problem. All right, good. So we say below 150, gear's coming down. We keep our hand on the gear handle until we verify that we have three green lights, just so we don't get busy someday, drop it and forget about it. All right, we have three green. That's down. Zero, zero, 06 Tango, runway 30, clear to land. Clear to land, 30, 1406 Tango. All right, below 125, flaps 10 coming in. Okay, props full forward. One more gums check. Gas is on the fullest tank. Undercarriage, down, three green. And a mirror. All right, undercarriage is down. Mixture's full rich. Props full forward. Pumps are on. Seatbelts, security all looking good, and switches. We have our landing light on. Okay, inside the white arc, flaps 20. Final approach path is clear. All right, we'll use the numbers as our aiming point. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. Thanks for riding along with me. I hope you enjoyed. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. Also, come check out Patreon. There's tons of bonus content there. Um, that, and these videos are listener supported, so that's a huge part of how they come out now every week, along with podcasts every week. Um, if money's a little tight right now, there's a free video for you at learnthefinerpoints.com. There's also a free trial to the Ground School app for about two hours of my time. You can get access to everything I know 
in the app uh, for an entire year. So definitely check out that free trial. It's iPad only at the moment until we perfect it. Um, and then we'll be moving a little wider on platforms. But if you have an iPad, definitely come check that out. Also a big thanks to the sponsors. Remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. And as always, a big thanks to you, the best fans on the internet, for watching this video. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe and fly your best.